Hi, welcome to Above Deck, a Below Deck Breakdown podcast. I'm Sarah Goldman, a photographer and former marine biologist living in Charleston, South Carolina. And joining me is my co-host and college roommate, Kelly. Kelly Busby, former radio host and current volleyball mom, coming to you from my home studio in Columbus, Ohio. Together, Sarah and I hosted the Socks with Sandals radio show on WFAL in Bowling Green, Ohio. And we are back again this week to discuss Below Deck and our love of all things Bravo. Today, we'll be discussing Below Deck Med Season 9, Episode 11, The Perfect Storm. Here's your recap. The stews struggle to serve difficult guests, and Aisha has to explain what a fish knife is. <laughs> As the guests get more demanding, Captain Sandy has to step in. Sandy gets some sad news from home, and Ellie invites Joe on a date. How'd you feel about this episode, Kelly? I was kind of excited about it, but I kind of felt like it was meh. Like, yeah. it was it was almost uncomfortable between mm-hmm. the guest behavior and then Joe's behavior yeah. in a way. So it's just, Agreed. You know, it was all right. So when the episode begins, it's four hours before the guests arrive. Remember, they have already left the dock. Um, now, also recall that there has been a change made in laundry where Ellie is only going to be washing the rags and towels and stuff. Right. Now, Ellie is convinced that nothing will change with the screw-ups happening because the problem has been Brie all along. Kelly, what did you think was going to happen? I think this new system will show that Brie is not 100% the cause of the issues in laundry. I think there's going to be, this is going to iron out everything, yes, pun intended, um, with any issues within, but so hopefully they can put it to rest. I mean, Brie is still Brie. <laughs> So. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that there would still be some missing items of clothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just hoping it's not as bad. Right. Yeah. So Gail gets to drive the tender in to pick up the provisions and Joe helps her with the docking process. And she's so proud of herself. And I'm proud yes. of her, too. Love it. Um, So some balloon sculptures arrive um, <laughs> at the dock. Um, you would have to drive so slowly for these not to blow out of the boat. I mean, I oh guess you have to tie it down, but can you imagine that would just be like a big sail? <laughs> yeah. I was impressed by the balloon arch. I mean, cool. I'm, I'm surprised that they, well, balloon arches are my arch nemesis. I'm just going to say it. Like they are, <laughs> everybody wants them, but they don't realize how much work goes into them. But, um, I was okay. truly surprised it was already put together. I really loved it, though. It was really pretty for the whole fire and ice theme. That's fun. Yeah. So Brie trying to put her epaulets on her shirt after she's already wearing the shirt is <laughs> kind of a metaphor for her work this season. <laughs> I think Aisha said, you make things so difficult for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brie. So it just... I mean, I've done stuff like that too. I'm always putting yeah. something on and then I'm trying to like cut the tag out of a shirt or something. Like, like why don't I just take this off? Exactly. <laughs> Try not to cut your hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Ian and Nathan go pick up the guests who are not excited to be getting on a quote fishing boat. Those are their yeah. words instead of the yacht. Okay. Now these are some rich bitches because yeah. they have Birkins and as they approach the yacht, someone says, I hope they have mother of pearl spoons. I, I don't know. I don't know about you, but like if I had a red flag, I'd be like, come on, mother of pearl spoons. I know they're doing caviar <laughs> and bougie things, but come on. Mother of pearl. Kinda mother crazy. of something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the guests, Mike, is an ex-NBA player, and <laughs> Ian has set up a basketball hoop for him on deck, and Asia asks him to put the ball in the hole. Go sports. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I think it's so cute that they thought he would want to shoot hoops on vacation on a yacht in the middle. YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> so the lady guests want to take a group photo outside but they don't like the couches that are out there oh. and so they have the girls move them 
Now, I know this might be an unpopular opinion, but my f- I have my photo clients move furniture all the time <laughs> during photo shoots. So I don't yeah. think it's that odd of a request. I mean, they could have gone up to a different deck. That might have been a better option. Yeah. Um, also, I haven't paid any attention to these couches all season. I feel like I'm seeing them for the first time. They are really ugly. Yeah. <laughs> they look yeah. like they are from the year of our Lord, 1987. They do look like they're from the Golden Girls set. Yes. Just <laughs> like, very the like, wicker. Yeah. Puffy. Yeah. I guess I haven't noticed them either. Um, I'm guessing this has happened before, but since they're on such a short charter, I'm wondering mm-hmm. if the editors wanted to emphasize their requests for things oh, for sure. and how they're a little over the top. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. So one of the guests asked for her martini to be um, brought for her. Um, it's about like 10 feet away, um, but she does not even say please. They say you can tell a lot about someone with how they treat people who work in the service industry, especially yeah. with servers. So this this says, this says screams volumes about this person. But So I dated someone once who snapped their fingers at a waitress to get their attention, oh, and that no. was our last date. And that was was our last date. Yeah. I was like, no, I don't think so. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now it's uh, water sports time, and some of the guests are sitting down on the swim platform, and they're just asking for drink after drink, um, one at a time. Like, every time they bring a drink, they're like, oh, we actually need another one of those. Bring another one. Oh, now we need a water. Annoying. Why didn't Ellie ask, would anyone else like a drink? I, I feel like others have done that in the past. So I'm sure they would have piped up and said, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, I just think it was silly of her to have to keep running back and forth and back and forth one drink yeah, at totally. a time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 100%. So John is preparing his Michelin star-esque dinner. And oh. Asia has some deckhands um, help move the balloon arch upstairs with her and it gets caught in the auto closing door. And this is almost a like major disaster. I gasped. That would have been really, really sad. It would have. Balloon arches. (laughs) So Jono comes up to tell the guests about the caviar appetizer he's prepared and they tell him it tastes like a washcloth. Oh, no. How would they know? I don't know, but I kind of know exactly what they're talking about. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so Jono can't do anything about how the caviar tastes. You know, it like comes out of a can, right? Right, right. And he says, I did not shit out those eggs. Some fish did. That was hilarious. <laughs> I'm not sure what they expected him to do. I'm, I'm sure he doesn't keep a stash of fresh caviar stocked up in his fridge somewhere downstairs. But yeah. I noticed it was only the women who were complaining Mm -hmm. and I feel like they said that to show that they know about caviar or they've had it before because they are Mm -hmm. super fancy people. We fancy. We fancy. Just so you know. Oh, did I mention I have a Birkin? I am so fancy. (laughs) So the first course is a seared sea bass and a crab couscous and the guests love it. And The dinner conversation is about whose children will be doing the debutante balls this season. Did you know anyone who ever went through that? Like, or went to Cotillion or anything? Yes, I had never heard of Cotillion until I moved to Charleston. Mm -hmm. But a lot of my friends that grew up here have done, like, the etiquette classes and Cotillion and all that stuff. It seems like a very old school tradition. Kind of like, like, in coming out in like london and stuff like yeah society. coming out in society yeah, yeah i'm ready to be married right i'm 16 <laughs> let's go um, yeah I'm, I'm sure it has right family dress. ties to most of those who participate and i feel like it's probably more of a southern thing in the u.s but i don't know yeah i associate it definitely more with southern culture um for sure and i know at least with some of the societies down here it has to be traced back through your like family roots, like multiple generations. Like the, I think it's the St. Cecilia society. That sounds amazing. That's very like, it's like how it should be. Yeah. Just how you would imagine. Yeah. So, um, Joe and Ellie are being a little flirty on this charter and 
Joe says he's hoping to kind of reignite the passion that she had for him um, before she heard the song. What is happening right now? He like, wants her, but he doesn't want her. <laughs> oh, it's so confusing. I know. So the guest and they, and that, boys say that girls are confusing. Like, come on. No, it's boys. It's always Here's the, the boys. Secret girls. It's boys that are the drama. That's right. So the guests note that the place settings are not correct. Oh. And one of them says, you know, we have butter knives, but there's no bread and butter on the table. And so Aisha tells Ellie, you know, that woman was holding a fish knife, not a butter knife. Yeah. And so I had to Google this, you know, because I didn't have etiquette classes or go to Cotillion. Right. Um, in Pickerington, Ohio. So fish knives come to a point at the at the cutting end. Okay. And unlike butter knives, which are rounded, oh, and man. the fish knife also has small notches on one side of the blade near the tip. So you can like separate the, if the skin is on the fish, you can like separate the, oh. the skin. Okay. Um, and well, in our Google Doc, I have a little picture so you can see. We, we need to uh, make sure that Grace gets that out there. So, because <laughs> this is important. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I used, yeah. I have used that knife before as a butter knife. Like for sure stab, i would not have known just stab little like balls of butter yeah. yeah no no way because i mean i've had that i've had that knife the fish knife come yeah. in like a silverware set and i'm like oh, uh -huh. a butter knife because there's only right. one <laughs> now we know maybe yeah so it, it makes sense but this is i'm not this is when the evening starts to get super awkward very awkward yeah. so this guest decides to tell Aisha about the butter knife. Right. This interaction is shocking. So yeah. when Aisha responds that it is in fact a fish knife, this woman turns to her husband and says, oh, she's trying to school me. And oh. Aisha says, I've worked in service a very long time. That is a fish knife. And then this lady says, well, your caviar service sucked. Just saying. So, oh, and she does this while she's fanning herself with a fan made of feathers. What was that? Like, <laughs> your, well, your caviar service sucked. What an insult. Like, what is that? I know. That was such a, like, little kid thing to say. Oh, my gosh. Oh, well, I'm wrong. Well, you stink. <laughs> <laughs> so after Aisha leaves, um, Butters, that's what I'm going to call this woman, Butters continues to go on and on about the interaction with, um, and then the knife. And charter guest Lori tells her, like, just cool it. Like, you need to stop. Butters. I love it. <laughs> and when they come back to serve the dessert, Butters says, mm -hmm. it's so uncomfortable now. Well, duh, you made it that way. You made it that way. Good gravy. <laughs> so Sandy pops out to see how dinner was and they do love the food and they also love sandy's sparkly shoes <laughs> meanwhile gail climbs into bed with nathan for a little canoodling cute super cute so the ladies go up top after dinner but they don't tell anyone they're going up there and then when they get up there they wonder why there's no service up there like where is everyone where where are our drinks um Aisha tells Joe to go up there and use his charm on them. This is like a last resort. Oh, and the ladies are on to Aisha's trick. This yeah. group is interesting. I mean, the the men seem very sweet and kind, yeah. laid back. They're having a good time. Mm -hmm. The ladies are the complete opposite and seem to be finding ways to make sure that this, the crew does not excel at their job. For sure. And I don't think it's all the ladies, but definitely two or three of them for definitely sure. Definitely butters. Definitely butters and the primary. <laughs> so John asks for late night snacks for his wife and Aisha says Jono has prepared sandwiches for this occasion but oh no she doesn't eat sandwiches. In fact yeah. his, her husband has never seen her eat a sandwich and so Aisha goes and prepares a bowl, uh, a bowl of berries yeah. but Mahisha I think it's Mahisha she goes yeah. to bed. Um if she does kind of fall going down the stairs, so karma's a bitch. <laughs> um, thank goodness this is a short charter. Oh my gosh, you are that is so true. Amen. The next day, Sandy goes out to talk to the guests and she tells a story about a primary she had who chartered a yacht for like a million euros. And 
They did not treat the staff very well. And she said she would end the charter right then because they treated the staff so badly. Yeah. Uh, Or, you know, if they did it again. And she says, you know, if you treat the crew well, they'll go above and beyond for you. And Sandy tells this story with a smile on her face. And I think she gets her point across in a nice way. And I love this moment. Totally loved it. Because she did ask Aisha how things were going. And Aisha Mm -hmm. let her know, like, they're still a little prickly, you know, whatever. So she tells Aisha, leave the guests to me. I've got this. And she handled it like a pro. Did you Mm -hmm. catch Butters leaving halfway through the story? Yeah. And saying, I'm over this conversation and just walked away. Maybe it felt a little too true. Little too, yeah, little too close to home. <laughs> Mesh. For our little pal Butters. So <laughs> the guests are going on an excursion, and okay. Joe has prepared some facts about what they are seeing. Awesome. And the guests are not interested at all. They just want to take pictures. Okay. But um, the guests do kind of pick up on some chemistry between Joe and Al, or I don't know. I don't know if they really pick up on chemistry or... They just kind of put them together because they're two young people that are beautiful. Yeah. Um, Ellie says it's the fertility temple that they're at. Oh, okay. Um, Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Joe's trying to tell them, you know, he's got these facts. He's trying to make sure that they learn something while they're, so he's giving facts. The guests are just trying to give looks, (laughs) you know, they just want to make the Instagram look good. I get it. Um, but poor Joe, he was all ready. He was ready to read his his, his notes, notes, but did not <laughs> his notes. It's notes that he asked like the engineer to print out for him. <laughs> it was like an email from the engineer. <laughs> He's like, but what about my book report, you guys? <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Isn't it kind of a weird place to be taking those kind of photos, like sexy photos at this like historic site? Didn't it seem kind of weird? I mean, it's it's, like, I mean, I don't know. There was something odd about it. Like a group photo in front of it would have been nice, you know, but like laying yourself on like the rocks that have been, you know, used since 419 BC. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, it's just a little strange. So (laughs) Sandy gets bad news about her dog, Bailey. He passed away the night before and Asia comforts her and they look at videos of Bailey. This was very sad. And Sandy says, this is one of the hard things about being at sea all the time is you will lose people and animals that you love when you're away, which is really hard. This is so very sad. I was tearing up because you do. We, we've all lost pets before and mm-hmm. they're in your life for such a short amount of time, but they leave just the biggest impact. I just couldn't imagine being away and getting that news of something like that happening that would have been just horrible yeah so lunchtime is um duck crispy duck i think it was like it better be crispy it better be better be i just don't understand the comments about the food before it even comes (laughs) i know where are my mother pearl spoons so Joe talks to Nathan and Gail about his whole like Ellie and Brie conundrum and he says he doesn't want either of them but when he drinks on his nights out he turns into a demon Okay. and Gail doesn't know where her loyalty lies is it with the deck team as kind of like one of the boys or is it as a roommate and a girlfriend to Ellie Yeah. and Gail thinks that Joe is stringing her along which yeah I think Gail's right I yeah. mean, we're all kind of feeling that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the guests depart, and Mahisha says they love the food, and then she makes a little comment that she wants to see where things are going to go with the lovebirds. And she says, you know who you are. And hey. she says there were really, you know, no issues. It was just such a great trip. And Aisha in her green screen says, were we on the same charter? He's just not wrong. I guess the fact that they were, that the crew was getting them everything they wanted and then some made them happy. So just mm-hmm. insert a shrug here. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> Right. So Aisha tells her, Stu, she's happy with how things went with them on this charter, especially with how things went in laundry. No. Um, yeah. I think there were a couple missing things, but I think it was just kind of, you know, 
They were quick finds. Under, like, yeah. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, I don't know if it was from before or what, but I think everybody doesn't want Brie to get in trouble. So they're just not saying anything. So <laughs> Ellie decides she's going to invite Joe on a date and he says yes, or he says why not or something like that. Yeah, let's do and it. Then, <laughs> let's do it. So he regrets it immediately and he tells Nathan he does not want to go. What is happening? Like, okay, first of all, Nathan and Joe are sitting on a jet ski on the yacht. Yeah. Having rocket. this little conversation. <laughs> super cute. Um, I'm just so confused. Like, why would he say? Because he hesitated at first. Yeah. When she asked him, but then he was like, sure, let's do it. And then, you know, yeah. so I don't. I don't I mean, know. I mean, he could have said, oh, I think we should just, you know, go out with everybody or, you yeah. know. So, yeah, I don't know. I get, you know, he felt put on the spot, I guess. I get it. Absolutely. So, and he didn't want to hurt her feelings. Okay. So the he has meeting. every right to change his mind. That's right. So Sandy asks who the lovebirds are at the tip meeting and they all kind of play dumb and say it's different people. She said she didn't care, which mm-hmm. is probably true, but she definitely would have been keeping a closer eye on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sandy <laughs> wants to know. Yeah. So the tip is good for a short charter, 20K. And wow. thank goodness for that. Those guys were so rude. I was kind of shocked, actually, because that's a whole lot of cash to get for such a short charter. But I will tell you, that crew deserved every dollar they earned. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. So Ellie asks Joe if he's excited for their date tonight. And he comes in, sits down on her bed to chat. And he tells her he feels a lot of pressure and he doesn't want to go on the date or he doesn't want to date, something like that. And yeah, that's where the episode happened. happened. What just happened? I know. Bit of a bit of a cliffhanger. So I bet she's going to try to talk him into it, though. Yeah, interesting. It'll be it's gonna be interesting. They didn't really show what's gonna happen next week, or did they? Um, yeah, there was a little thing. I'm trying to remember. Oh, there's gonna be a leak with the cabin leak. Well, that's right. Um, I'm not sure what else. Yeah. But... Well, it's gonna be an interesting episode, I'm sure, for the next one. Yeah, it looks exciting. So we'll we'll see how that goes. All right. It's time for our segment, Acting Like Asia, where we attempt to say an Asia quote like the Kiwi Queen herself. I'm Asia. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I'm Asia. Everything, everywhere, all at once. You're good. <laughs> okay, here's Love one for it. you. All right, it's one word and it's one second long. Okay. Hello. Hello. Good. <laughs> Hello. No. That's what I'm going to start saying to people all the time now. Just like that. It's different than my hello. La 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 la. 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 <laughs> From Seinfeld for you uh, young people. Uh, it's time for Hot Tub Convo, where we discuss what's happening with our favorite Below Deck cast members. Sarah, season 10 yeah. of Med is filming. It is. I'm so excited. Some photos were leaked this week, and it looks like it's a new boat. Um, Apparently, they're in Barcelona. And do we know who the returning cast members are? I think Captain Sandy. Well, Sandy and Aisha, I think no surprise there. Awesome. I mean, Kelly, how do you feel? Like, I love to have a surprise, but now I know that there are, like, a couple people returning from other seasons. And I just, I feel, I don't know whether we should share it or not you know let's not share it okay because i always love the like aisha and captain sandy perfect we knew they would be back that's great i think the rest we should hold on to okay that sounds good other people have reported so if you do go digging and you want to do that you can find out but um we won't do spoilers here how about that yeah i don't love that so yeah okay i like that so i'm excited Barcelona will be cool. That'll be that'll be great. Have you noticed this weekend they mm-hmm. have been playing sailing yacht on a loop? <gasps> have they? Yes. And it specifically oh. like yesterday it was season four. 
So maybe they're getting ready for season five. Well, I I mean, we are halfway, more than halfway through this season. You yeah. and I have thought that sailing yacht would be next. It was supposed yes. to be now, but we think it'll be next. And so, yeah, yeah I would think in the next few weeks, we're going to be getting a preview for the next season of sailing yacht. Gonna That's be exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. So Gail and Ellie were on Watch What Happens Live virtually last week, and Ellie from Fort Lauderdale, and Gail was in the Whitsundy Island. She's getting ready to do the charter season there. Um, So Gail said that when Nathan took the fall for her about the whole jacuzzi thing, um, she said it did make her feel some kind of way. So... I think it felt good to have somebody kind of like sticking up for her, like taking the fall, even though she did not want him to do that. Right. I Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I mean, especially after her relationship and how yeah. he was not for her, like not supportive. Yeah. I just think Nathan was trying to be a team player and. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Andy asked Ellie if she is currently in touch with Joe Bradley, and she said no, but I'm open to it. Of course she is. <laughs> I don't know how things are going to end with these two. <laughs> I don't. I, it's been from the clips that we've seen. I don't even know like how it's going to end next episode with yeah. any what of that. What I suspect is going to happen is, you know, he's going to say he doesn't want to go on the date. She's be like, screw you. I'm over it. Yeah. And then, you know, we know there's a new stew coming in that he's going to get into. So, and then, oh, that was the other thing that was on the preview for next week was him and Bree, like, hooking up in a room. Like. Doing something. Because he says, like, hike up your Serious. (laughs) Yeah. Like. It was kind of like a little Fifty Shades of Grey. Like. It was. Heat. Yeah. (laughs) Whoops. So. So um, just as an FYI, there is a Below Deck Med after show on Peacock. There are three episodes so far, and it features interviews with the cast. Kate Chastain is on the first episode, and there's lots of good stuff to check out. So be sure to do that. Yes. So far, we've just watched clips, but I'm definitely going to like sit down and watch these at some point because they do look really fun. Is Kate like the hostess with the mostess or? I don't think so. I think she's just like interviewed, I think in the first episode with Aisha. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I think they're chatting about stuff. So it'll be interesting to see if they bring in anybody else from past seasons to kind of talk about it. That'd be cool. It's time for our segment. Join me in the wheelhouse where we decide who needs to see Captain Sandy for a stern talking to. Sarah, I think I know the answer to this, but what? Or who, I'm sorry, who do you choose this week? This was an easy one. I'm going to choose most of these lady guests, Butters, um, the primary, and anyone else that was complaining the whole time. Oops. And Mostly Butters, though. My goodness. <laughs> Get up here. Get up here, girls. Don't complain about the stairs. They complained about the stairs, too, right off the bat. Do you remember that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they, they just, I felt like... I'm sad for people who complain about stuff all the time. Yeah, I'm sad for you. Your life is so hard (laughs) and you make it that way. (laughs) Get your Birkin bag and get up here. Yeah. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Above Deck. Thank you to our team at Herd at Media, especially Grace. Please subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to tell a friend about us and please rate and review us five stars only. Please follow us on Instagram at Above Deck Pod, and you can email us at Above Deck Pod at gmail.com. You can also watch our episodes on the Herd at Media YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm Kelly Busby. And I'm Sarah Goldman. We'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.